Hey there, my name is Seth Juarez. We're here at the Microsoft Research Faculty Summit 2015. I'm here with Manuela Veloso. So tell us about your work with robotics. So my work is on the intersection or the combination of AI, artificial intelligence, and robotics. So I work on uh, trying to have these artificial creatures, these robots, be capable of doing an autonomous cycle of perception cognition and action. So you try to understand how can the algorithms uh, process uh, their sensors, make decisions about uh, how to achieve their objectives, and eventually actually actuate the decisions. This feels like a very good mixture of engineering, not just for software, but also real engineering. What are some of the challenges you faced in both areas? Yes, yeah, so indeed uh, we want to address the physical world too, the physical uh, machines. So it's not just a cyber project, not just a software kind of research, but it does have to run with real sensors and with real uh, uh, actuators. Uh, so we care about also mobile robots, which is not just manipulators as actuators, but actually machines that move, so go from one position to another by themselves. And I've been working on these autonomous mobile robots for a long time. So the challenges have to do a lot with this integration, with this problem of having whatever the perception, whatever the real sensors come up with, uh, be used by an algorithm that is trying to decide which actions to take to achieve a goal, and also making sure that those type of actions go and are executed in a real platform, in a real hardware platform. So what does it mean to put these pieces together, like a speech recognizer, a, a scene record, a vision algorithm, a planning algorithm, a learning algorithm, eventually into uh, together so that you can have this perception, cognition, and actually integrated. And I've been working on this problem for almost uh, more than 20 years. What are some cool sort of use cases where you've seen these the sort of perception, cognition, and action sort of really work well together? So you, you have to understand that uh, we, uh, we have been working on robot soccer for a long time. And the issue there has become is full autonomy in the presence of a lot of uncertainty, which are the opponent, but complete autonomy. No input from humans. Uh, you are supposed to play on a customized field uh, on a specific size and specific like lines and landmarks and the colored balls and everything is kind of customized like a basketball field, a basketball court or a soccer field is all customized. I mean the sense that it's not a real kind of like uh, open-ended environment, but the opponent is a big uncertainty. You really don't know what are they going to do? How are they going to actually act? So this robot soccer problem has been a teamwork problem. So how do they work together? But also this planning and this thinking and this sensing and this actuating under a lot of uncertainty with a very, very clear goal. So you want to win the game. Mm -hmm. So it's a very interesting problem from a research point of view, how to handle this uncertainty with such a clear goal. So we've talked a little bit about action. It feels like we've started to talk a little bit about, about cognition. What's the best, is there a certain way for robots to think that's better than others, certain algorithms that work better than others, or it's just a whole mishmash of things? It's a, it's a complicated kind of problem, uh, but the cognition part basically is about uh, being able to get as input whatever the perception gives you and being able to generate an output for the motors, for the actuators within real time. That's also complicated because, for example, you have your sensors at 60 hertz. 60 hertz means about like uh, every frame comes in about 16 milliseconds. So you have 16 milliseconds to, from a cognitive point of view, analyze all your possible actions or plan your routes or see what the scene looks like, making decisions about actions and issue the actions to the actuators so that they move in real time. So we don't, this is another thing about the integrative AI, we don't want the robots to be just there stopped and saying, what does the scene look like? And tomorrow they actually act upon it. Mm -hmm. So there is a lot of like real time aspect to this cognitive process. And the cognitive process usu usually is based on a planning problem. So it does a, an abstraction of maybe not at the, that doesn't plan at the pixel level, but you get a representation of the world and use that representation to generate routes, 
to generate actions at different levels, either high level actions for route planning or low level actions for the motors like motion planning. So let's finish up with perception. Yes. What are some of the challenges with perception? It feels like there's going to be a lot of challenges there. Yeah, perception is a, a really difficult problem in general. Uh, but let me just tell you that one of the advantages of this also this integration of perception, cognition and action is what I call purposeful per perception. So it's almost as if you think about the scene that we are seeing here. And it's kind of overwhelming if we would like be having a computer process all these details, like the color of this carpet, all the way to the width of these corridors, all the way to how many people are around. I mean, imagine. Mm -hmm. However, uh, if we actually uh, do a perception algorithm that uh, is connected to a cognition algorithm or that it's a I producer see. of what cognition needs, so pro uh, cognition and perception work as producers and consumers. So whatever the perception produces is what can be consumed. So if the robot cannot read that whiteboard, it doesn't really matter to process it because there is no use for that information from a cognitive point I of see. view. So it's like when you and I get out of an airplane uh, in some airport where we have never been, we always get through. Because no matter what the colors of the chairs are, no matter how wide this thing, we only look for baggage claim. That's it. That's out of the whole scene. Because we want to go out from a cognitive point of view, it kind of filters down what's needed from a perception point of view. I see. It's like a constrained perception. Yeah, exactly. It's very constrained by what's needed. Right. So when the robots move in a soccer field and they don't know where the ball is, the only thing that the cognition is telling them is ignore everybody else, just find the ball. Mm -hmm. It's like very beautiful the fact that uh, because you are doing a task, that the task constrains what's needed in perception. And of course, if a fire starts, you would like to be able the robot to know, but maybe the current robots don't have that because they're not processing all that information. So it will be another level of research to try to them do them purposeful perception so that that particular task gets executed. And on top of that, be alert for everything else. Well, we are not there yet. Yeah. You understand? So that's the point. Well, thanks so much for spending some time with us. Thank you very thanks much. Thanks so much for watching, and we'll catch you next time. Take care. Thank you.